Oh, that was a long day, but I saved a bunch of lives today and built two different hospitals. What is that? We got mail! Well, we weren't planning to do a video today, but I got some viewer mail. Let's crack it open and see what it is. Yeah, I gotta do a video to show you guys what it is and to thank whoever sent it. A sneak peek of the next unboxing, guys. Got a dirty one and a clean one to compare and show you guys. Well, that's not good. We go downstairs to the uh, bowels of the museum and we have some stuff piled, but it's piled in a safe way because we're not idiots. We're not going to put a bunch of empty one of 18 scale boxes and then a full one on top of it and just top heavy. You know what I mean? So we're pretty careful how we put stuff. Glenn says to me, one of my cars fell down and I wasn't really paying attention. I kind of glanced over. I seen that it wasn't one of his super expensive ones, so I kind of said, oh, that sucks. I thought it was just like the box that got damaged, right? I'm not really paying attention. And then he comes up to me, he's got a handful of blue parts in his hand. And he says, oh yeah, the, these are off the car, blah, blah, blah. And I, I said, how are those off the car? Like, how are they out of the box, right? Like that, and I'm looking at the pieces and it looks like plastic model pieces, right? And I said to him, that's not off the car, Glenn. He goes, yeah, it's the car parts. And I'm looking and I see that it's a mirror. Holy shit. Look at the damage this thing took from falling off. Like it's, it was probably six feet high off the ground or something, whatever it fell off in the box. But check this out. Yeah, we're baffled. Glenn says it might have been a spirit that did it because we're pretty... Um careful how we stack stuff first thing i noticed was the interior i said to glenn what the hell happened he goes that's what happened from it falling look along top of the of uh, the windshield over here like literally the body is broken guys like the the die cast or i don't know maybe that's paint that came off i can't tell there's just so much havoc, though, guys. That's the die cast that broke there. I'm zoomed in to try to show you. Wow. Glenn, gave, Glenn wanted to give it to me for, for the Bigfoot, but I told him, I said, let's try to fix, see if we could salvage it first, buddy, you know? Um... He had a good idea because it's all broken up on top and everything. Like we could smush it and everything like that, but I'd rather try to fix it for him first. Don't mind my appearance, guys. I haven't showered and this is going to be a bonus video. See, when I was a bonehead burnout the other day and uploaded Sunday's video or released it. See, I can upload stuff days in advance and set it to release at certain times. And I thought I had set that to release on Sunday. But it dropped Saturday when I already had a video. This, I'm intending to drop it even though it hasn't been 24 hours or a day or whatever since the last one. Because it's a bonus video and a thank you video. Um, Max. Now, he was a complete stranger. Uh, he met me through my YouTube videos. Uh, Glenn... Uh, laughs because I tell Glenn that when he first sent me a friend request on Facebook, I thought I thought it was a troll. Like I thought it was a fake account because of the name of the Facebook on his Facebook. I thought it was a troll account. I actually debated adding him, and his wife Krista is awesome as well, and they both sent me this. I have an idea what it is, but I'm gonna open it up and show you guys. And by the way, Max and Kristen, me and Glenn were just talking and we're gonna send you guys a package. We completely forgot to send out a card to you at Christmas. I just remembered that like an hour ago when I was talking to Glenn. We're gonna send you guys something. Max, if you can do me a favor and message me and let me know uh, 
what you and Krista collect, like what type of cars she likes, whatever. Um, I have an idea for you, but it's more of a broad idea if you can more pinpoint it. Now I'm being delicate with this because it is homemade, okay? So it's in here to keep it all good and it did arrive all good. Oop, I don't want to wreck it while I'm saying it's all good. Now, I, wow, I wasn't expecting it to be made of material. Wow, guys. Um, now, when I got the idea that I wanted a Bigfoot truck, Max had his Bigfoot truck. He sent me pictures of it. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was in an acrylic case like the big one I have mine in, or one similar, like it was in a big, like it looked fancy his. His might be more fancy than mine, but it was a big square case, if I'm not mistaken. And it's running over cars. Um, mine's about 60% done. I've got the Bigfoot logo on it. I've got to put the crowd in the background. I'm going to print that out maybe this weekend. But one thing he had on his Bigfoot, I said, wow, buddy, where'd you get that? The flag, the summit flag. That is awesome, guys. I did not think that that was made. Like, I thought it was basically, yeah, I didn't think it was like that. And it's stiff so that it stays. Yeah, that's amazing, guys. Look at that one. Oh, yeah. That is amazing. You know what that reminds me of? The little pole that's on? My mother's knitting. knitting? She, was, she used to... It reminds me of one of her little knitting needles. But hers were longer. But, um, yeah. Anyway, that's amazing. Now, I'm going to have to figure out how to affix it to the truck. And where to affix it to the truck. But I'll show you guys so you guys can get an idea, anyway, about it. Thank you so much, Max and Krista, by the way. Wow, I'm pumped. That's going to be, it's almost done. This weekend, for sure, I'm going to print out the background because this motivates me to get it done. And guess what, guys? A little bit of news this video. So this weekend, I'm going to be going back anyway when I get my tax return, which will be this week. But this Sunday, we might go to the diecast place at the Dixie Outlet Mall. Uh, might and if we do I'm gonna pick out the cars that ironically I'm probably gonna have the money for the next day but uh, we're gonna go have a look and stuff like that pick out some stuff and this little grommet here too I know that this has to do with something I'll Max probably already explained it but I'll get it from him again um but yeah might just be to hold the flag on or whatever, but I'll figure, I'll find out from Max. Sorry guys, I'm tired, starting to get brain farts. There is something else I wanted to tell you guys too. So you know I'm getting something cool when I get my taxes. Oh, uh, Glenn's car, I'm just gonna show you it in the light. So he's pretty generous. Right away he says to me, oh, well you can smash it and use it for your Bigfoot diorama. But if you guys remember, I have a brand new one coming. I got to remember this is not the way it was before. Um, so this felt like fell off a shelf down there. Glenn had it on a, on a shelf, but he had it way back or not a shelf on a rubber made tote, but he had it way pushed back. So it's kind of weird how it fell down. But we had shit fall on the glass bar top down there before too and bust it. And we were like, how the hell did that happen? It's like, we got a ghost here for real. And I don't necessarily believe in them. Um, but Glenn right away offered me to smash it. But I'm not going to because this was his first die cast car. So I'm going to try to fix it up the best I can. The reason I have faith I could fix up this mess or do something with it is because I seen in the Canadian one of the teen scale group, uh, there, I learn about from this group all the time, especially about the older die cast, the supercar collectibles castings, they came in these boxes that were notorious. Like they had windows all around. They looked like a beautiful box. Um, but just the way the car was bolted in and stuff, 
Uh, it was notorious for causing damage. Well, this guy orders an expensive car off of eBay. It was a Mopar. I believe it was a Roadrunner, Superbird, something. No, it wasn't a wing car. It was a Roadrunner, I think. Um, something like that. It was an expensive Mopar. But it literally looked like somebody took the box, opened the top of it, and shook a bag of model parts into the box. And it was a die cast car, but it literally looked like a bag of model parts. Like it was a box of loose parts with the four wheels in it. Like it was, I couldn't believe it. I, I took pictures of it and posted it to my fa I own Facebook actually. That's how wild it looked. Um, but the guy ended up fixing it up pretty good. He did a lot better than I would have done. Um, this... We're going to try to do something with it because it's kind of sentimental. It's Glenn's first one. But the good thing about this is it's not Smokey and the Bandit. It's the same exact car as Smokey and the Bandit, but it's a different paint job. Uh, but this we can get fairly inexpensive. So I told Glenn, I said, even though it's not the exact car, we can get you a good one. And yeah, to me, it wouldn't matter as long as it was the same car in a good box. I'd be okay with that. So worse comes to worse. Well, either way, I'm not going to be able to fix it the way it was. So we're going to get him another one. Because right? we can get that cheap. And Glenn, don't buy one. Because I'll find mm -hmm. you one cheap. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I just... I thought it was a lot... They were a lot more hardy. The Ertle. But it's not... It's not the car itself. What happened was when it made contact with the floor, the base broke, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And then the car... Sorry, Glenn... You know what, I'm going to put it down. It's not like it's doing any more damage to it or anything. But the car went completely into orbit. And this is where those Maisto plastics come into play. And the KK scale uh, models boxes that you want to throw out. I'm just going to open this car, sit the car up right and then not touch it again. Because every time I look at the friggin' thing, it's doing somersaults. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of wondering how it fell because it was at the back of the tote near the wall. That's what I'm wondering about too, buddy. Like, because um, <laughs> that's really weird. And that would have made a loud crash. So if it happened like when I was sleeping, mm -hmm. that would have startled me awake. Yeah. Like I, I sleep. Heard it up here, but you were at work at the time. Oh, so you were here when it yeah. happened. Okay, so. Okay, because, yeah, I was wondering if it was just you. So, Glenn, I thought Glenn had just found it, but he was here and heard it fall, actually. Um, and it was weird, because when it fell, the noise actually sounded like it came from the kitchen. Um, I sleep a lot sound more sounder now as an adult. I think being with Diane, I just got settled down and stuff like that. Um, but I, I would still spring awake if somebody was fucking coming in. Sorry about the language, guys. If somebody was coming in the house or something, I, I'd still be awake. I got a funny story, actually. We lived on Big R Avenue, me and Diane. There's a, one of the door panels. Mm -hmm. um, we lived on Big R Avenue, which... Uh, it's funny because there was a house on the corner that was the Satan's Choice Clubhouse and then the Hell's Angels Clubhouse for years and years before we lived there and you could still see the outline of it and that. Three houses up from the house we lived in. But um, it was a summer day and I was sleep asleep in the bedroom because I was on like the morning shift or the, yeah, my 4 a.m. shift, right? So I was getting sleep wherever I could like I do now. Um, and, uh, my head is up near the open part of the window and my, uh, Diane's car is parked in the driveway. It was a single car driveway and my car was parked on the street and I heard something and I'm half asleep. I don't have my eyeglasses on and I'm blind as a bat, right? I look outside and somebody's in our driveway. And I didn't even think about it. Out of bed, I'm in my underwear, grab 
my baseball bat and I run outside. Or at first I run out of the bedroom. Diane looks at me like I'm on drugs. What's the matter? I said, there's somebody out at the car. I'm trying to explain it, right? I open up the door, run outside, and it's a female that is meth out of her head, just twitching, dancing. She's got stuff all over the trunk of my car, like the, the, the contents of her purse, like, you know, one of those people. And, uh... Yeah, I, I said, you got to leave like that. You can't be in people's driveways like that. Like that could have went bad. Like if it was dark or something, what if I came around the corner and just, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, luckily I seen it was a female. And then, then as soon as I told her to leave and that, then I realized I'm talking to a female outside in my underwear. And at this point, there's neighbors outside like looking and stuff, right? But they, everybody thought it was funny, thankfully. But I didn't think it was funny at the time because I had a little bit of extra weight on. Um, good thing it wasn't like today where it was 5,000 below zero with nine. Oh, yeah. Good minutes. thing it wasn't like today. I would have friggin' froze. Yeah, I go to work today, guys. It felt like plus six, a nice warm breeze. I left work, snow on my car. It's minus four. Okay, so we are going to, I'm just going to have a look at this on Bigfoot. See if I could kind of attach it somehow or something just to show you guys. But give me a sec here. For anybody that didn't see it or to refresh your memory, this is Project Bigfoot. This idea, I don't steal people's ideas. Same with the hovering DeLorean. I gave the plug to the guy that I got it from in his video. This idea for the diorama came from Max. Soon as I seen it, I said, wow, I got to get a Bigfoot truck, got to do a diorama. Um, his is different than mine, of course. But yeah, the one thing that's the same is that that stuck right out is that awesome flag. And I think his wife, Krista, makes the flags. And if that was you, Krista, that made the flag, that's an amazing job. And I think that that's awesome that you're enthusiastic about this stuff as well. Diane hated it. But then again, I was a bit obsessed about it. So I can understand. Reminder, this acrylic case, just a chance circumstance, okay? So that is the case I wanted, but they aren't cheap. Even at Michael's, they're not cheap with the coupon. I can't remember what they were, but I was hunting around trying to get one for cheap. Um, I bought the black, um, I'm so tired, guys. The black Miami Vice car off a guy that I bought other cars off him before. Really nice guy. I bought a Herbie car off him, stuff like that. He came by and dropped the cars on my porch and I wasn't here and he left something else. And he texted me, he said, oh, hey, man, I left you a display case. Uh, it needs a little repair, but I thought maybe you can fix it and use it. What happened was the glue let go. Like it wasn't even broken. It was a case of the glue let go on the seams. So easy, easy fix. And I was expecting just like a one of 18, like one of the plastic display cases or for a one of 25. But when I seen that, I said, holy shit. But then when I seen it split, I said, can I fix it? And crazy glue fixed it easy. And it's such a perfect fit. Well, I'll show you. It can't fit tighter than that, guys. Like when I take this out, like when I take the top off to check the flag on the truck, the truck's gonna roll. Like it's literally being held in place by the case, which is awesome. Okay, so here he is free guys. I'm just using this one of 25 scale. It's a vintage hurdle Smokey and the Bandit. It used to be mine. Uh, it's Bandit too. Uh, just to show you guys, so they were more toy grade than adult collector grade back in the day. Uh, but one thing that they did have that Ertl got away from, I'm going to show you guys something. Pretty impressive, actually. Opening trunk. But anyway, let's see what we could do about this flag here. Maybe attach it somehow to something. Just to show you guys. 
So I was just guessing because I want to show you guys the flag on the truck before I actually talk to Max and see where it goes. But I was just trying it and I was putting it between the bars on the truck. Looks like that's where it really goes. If it's good enough for Bob Chandler, it's good enough uh, for me. Unless Max and Krista say otherwise and I'm wrong. And then I'll put it in the right place. Oh man, that looks amazing. I'm so happy with the I I didn't think it'd be that nice. I was not thinking it'd be that nice. Like I was showing Glenn that, like holy frick. That is amazing. Guys, thank you so much. That is awesome. I will never get rid of that. Even if I got rid of this truck ever, which I never will, I will not get rid of that flag. But I don't get rid of gifts. So I can't see myself getting rid of the truck. Plus I love it. But I looked at the picture like you guys seen Bob Chandler put the flags between the bars and that the way they made it, it actually goes perfectly between the bars. So good job guys, that is ingenious. You guys could sell those actually. Wait till you guys. Oh, guys, I'm so happy with that. I was just telling Glenn, you got to remember, I got this Bigfoot truck as a gift from my friends, from my, my crew. And that flag, like I'm making a diorama because I love the truck so much. My friends got me the truck. I was telling Glenn that I loved it as a kid, but as an added bonus, it's a movie truck on top of it. Like, it's a movie car as well, so I didn't... I was saying before, oh, I'm going to get Bigfoot even though it's not a movie car, but it is. But this project is going perfect. Perfect. Like, think of how it's coming into place. I got the truck as a gift. Somebody gave me the acrylic display. That flag is awesome, guys. I'm in love with that. Like, oh, man. That totally dresses up the truck. It enhances it. It's an enhancement piece is the word I would use. And stop looking at it and showing you guys. Thank you so much, guys. I'm so happy about that. I'm going to be plastering it everywhere showing people. Go on, get right with the Lord, but the devil is everywhere. Hey, Randy, Quit singing. The devil. Sorry, guys. Uh, Glenn forgets that we were here and he just started just belting out in song all of a sudden. So I apologize for that. He's a little bit embarrassed now. He's downstairs. I'm just teasing. It wasn't him. <laughs> and he's going to laugh when he watches this later because he's downstairs in the basement. Um, yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you so much, uh, Max and Krista, for that. That is amazing. And it's going to make the diorama pop even more. Like it I even took a bunch of still shots of it just now. So you're going to see those when I put them up later. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, yeah, just an update of what's coming up. Uh, yeah, oh, I'll show you what's coming up. Okay, so if you guys remember, um, I already did an unboxing of a green light A-Team van. But I was explaining to you how I didn't like green lights weathering process. Then again, I'd only had a close look at the weathering on the 1 in 24 scales because I had all of my favorite movie cars in green, uh, greeny version, 1 of 24 and 1 of 64. So I figured do an unboxing video of these guys and I want to get a close up look of this weathering and see if it's what I suspect. Looks like they just sprayed clear coat or something. And then I want to do like a little comparison video. Not only will we compare those, but we also oh, want to... Right with the Lord, with the devil, Glenn, knock it off. Hey, Randy. Sorry, guys. He, we're going to the Dixie Outlet Mall Sunday. He's excited about the diecast place. Uh, anyway, yeah. So the, what I was thinking is we have the A-Team vans through... We have the green light ones we just seen. Um, we also have the old toy grade Ertl ones, uh, the metal one. We also have the big plastic one that was done by Ertl, believe it or not. Um, 
Yeah, so I was thinking that we have a look at that weathered version, compare the two of them together, you know. And then we have kind of a walk down memory lane and explore the 18 vans, the different toy grade ones, and talk about them. So, and then I could tell you guys what's the best one, in my opinion, of course, to get. It's not one that I own. Glenn owns it, but Glenn's is kind of a fixer-upper. But we'll get into that in the, in the video when we do it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. As a, again, as a bonus video, we were not planning to do it. Uh, but we got viewer mail uh, uh, from viewers that have become uh, friends. I talk to Max all the time. Yeah, he was a complete stranger to me. Started what came across my videos one day. Super cool guy. Um, he comes to this area. We well, we hope he gives us a call to hang out. And if we go to that area, the same. And if we don't do it sooner or later, we're gonna make a plan to do it. Um, yeah. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please uh, hammer like for me. Makes me not get up soon. Just hammer like for me. Please subscribe and share. And as always, guys, happy hunting. And thank you, Max and Krista. Don't get right with the Lord, but the devil is everywhere. Hey, Randy, what? The devil, huh? The devil is everywhere.